Welcome back, Shalligators. Ooh, there is drama in the lady rap community. Between Megan the Stallion, I will not say the stallion, it doesn't make any fucking grammatical sense and it's stupid and weird to say. Megan the Stallion and Nicki Minaj, who looks like she might bite. She, doesn't Nicki sort of give off the vibe that if you were in a fight with her, she'd bite? Mm. Nicki is a crazy person. She's a crazy, scary person. And she is also getting bodied so hard in this feud by Megan, who is doing nothing at all. Nothing at all. There is so much to learn here. There is so much to unpack. I asked you guys on Instagram, what, what celeb topics are on your mind this week? Overwhelmingly, y'all, we're talking about Nikki and Megan. Because it's an interesting dynamic that I think, whether or not you are a f female rapper topping the charts, you have probably experienced where it is just plain jealousy and insecurity from your rival and also watching your rival self-destruct if you give them enough time. If you give almost anyone enough rope, they'll hang themselves. We're gonna break this down. I'm gonna tell you how to learn from what Nikki is doing, how to learn from what Megan's doing, and basically just go on a huge shred rant about both of them because what the fuck. But before we get started on our shred adventure, follow me on Instagram, ShallonXO. I'm gonna be launching Shallentine's Day stuff, ooh, February 1st. Our theme this year, how to get what you deserve. I'm gonna tell you how to get the dates, the type of guy you want, the sex, the gifts, the treatment. I get treated very well. I have a closet full of couture because I know how to work men and I'm gonna teach it to you. I'm gonna pass this on to you. And I think at one point, I wanna do a whole series on being a gold digger and how to get money out of men because again, I know what I'm doing. So go ahead over there. I'm gonna be clipping a whole bunch of that. And listen, if you wanna level up a little bit for Valentine's Day or just the new year, you know, we're still in like new year vibes, be a part of my clothing subscription rental service, XO Style Box. You get five to 10 pieces a month. You can swap as many times as you want. You can keep the pieces for as long as you want. And these are very expensive pieces, anywhere from like 200 to $800. Why buy these things? Take your picture, post on Instagram, do the thirst trap, make your ex jealous, move on with your life. Or wear them for work, wear them for special occasions, wear them for a date night. Experiment with new styles without the commitment. Because you know, if you guys have learned one thing about me throughout this whole YouTube career, I am not good at commitment, okay? If I could just rent men and then return them, would that be great? Oh, <gasps> like, a, like a gigolo, subscription, rental thing. Not even a gigolo, they don't even have to put out. Sometimes you just need men around. You need like the weight of a man on top of you, like a cuddle thing. Has Japan invented this? I feel like if it's gonna start anywhere, Japan would do this shit. Don't they have like little girls panties and vending machines? What's going on over there? Are they all right? Have they been okay since Pearl Harbor? I don't know, I just feel like that was a shift for them. Anyway, let's talk Nikki and Megan. So what happened was, and let, let me just start by saying, I am a white woman from the suburbs, okay? I'm a white chick. I am exactly as hip hop as I look. Please bear with me. And if you have tea that I don't have, put it in the comments so that everyone can benefit from your knowledge and not my whiteness. Megan released a track called Hiss, Hiss, on like Thursday at midnight, I think. Thursday or Friday at midnight. And she references, she takes a little dig at Nikki talking about Megan's law. Megan's Law is a sex offender registry thing. And as most of us know, Nicki Minaj's husband, Kenneth Petty, Nicki is literally Mrs. Petty. It's like me marrying someone whose last name is Vigilante. If you know anyone. Kenneth Petty is a bad person, okay? He is blessed with the greatest name ever, but he is in fact a bad person. So back in 1995 or six, he was convicted and served four years for attempting to rape a 16 year old girl at knife point. Then in 2002, he shot a guy and killed him. Shot him three times in the stomach in New York and killed him and did time for manslaughter. This is who Nicki Minaj is dating. And it's interesting, I'm sorry, <laughs> she's not dating him. She married him. He also recently served, I think 120 days on house arrest for violating his parole, for threatening someone in the Migos. I don't know, they all look alike to me. Like offset, takeoff, submarine, shoebox, lunch pail. I don't know, I don't know who they are. But one of them was threatened with murder by a, a murderer who said, start planning your funeral, pussy. Judges don't like that. And so that fucked up his conditions of parole. So he was ordered to do house arrest. It's, what is funny to me is that Nikki claims like, I don't care, Blah, people deserve second chances. Blah. You don't care 
To, you don't care if Ma if anyone disses your husband. Megan the Stallion makes an oblique reference to Megan's law, which again is a sex offender registry law. Who and Kenneth Petty also got in trouble for failing to register as a sex offender. Mm. You are so not bothered by this that you, Nicki Minaj, go on a wildly unhinged, I'm talking like psychotic break level where she's like arguing back and forth with herself in the comments and on IG lives and tweets for 72 hours about Megan the Stallion before releasing, releasing truly one of the softest and lamest diss tracks I have ever heard. And keep in mind, I am a white woman in the suburbs, okay? I love things that are soft and lame. I love Morgan Wallen. Yeah, I do. That's where we're at. So when I say a diss track is whack and lame, it is very whack and very lame. She came out with her song Bigfoot yesterday or someday, just very recently, just like days after Megan had released her, her song. And it is just a steaming pile of horse turds. It is awful. It's bad. It's bad for a lot of reasons. One, it contains pretty much everything she'd already tweeted. Like there were no like, oh, and Charlemagne the God made a good point. I'm just learning all these people. Charlemagne the God made a good point. He's like, if I hadn't already heard her say these insults, like I call Megan Bigfoot as a reference to when Tory Lanes, or is it Lane? Lane means the nose en français. C'est Tory Lane. Shot her in the foot and Megan's really tall. So ha ha ha, Bigfoot. Okay, we get it. If she hadn't already made that joke, it would have been like, ah, oh, but she did. And so it's like, she she blew it too fast. And when she put all these things in a song, Charlamagne said it right. He's like, that song had no business leaving the studio. I can't sample it here because of copyright violations. They'll like literally delete my channel. Not worth it for you, Nicki Minaj. But it just seems, the track is very bad melodically. It's bad, it's not mixed well. Like the backing music is too high and you can't really hear her voice. And Nikki, like once you realize how dumb and whack her lyrics are, you realize the only kind of thing she's got going for is the weird voice that she does. Oh, I'm a Nicki Minaj and you wanna eat my pussy. Like, okay, just, okay, cool. She sounds like she's doing a bunch of impressions and or in the middle of an exorcism. And when you pull back and look at Nicki Minaj's behavior overall, that's exactly what she's doing. She's doing impressions of sane people when she's trying to like keep it together. And she also seems to be constantly in the middle of a demonic possession. I don't like Nicki Minaj one bit. She is incredibly racist. She's incredibly racist against white people. Guess who's a white person? Me, I am. I don't appreciate people who hate other white people. I don't like that. D call me crazy. Yeah, no, you can be racist against white people. No, you can't. Okay, okay, yeah. I don't like people who hate other races. I don't care, I don't care what that race is. There's bad white people, there's bad black people, there's bad people in a wheelchair, there's p bad people who are combat veterans with just a hook for a hand, all right? Bad comes in all shapes and sizes, so does good. Nicki Minaj doesn't believe this because she is incredibly insecure. Here's some exclusive tea for you. Are you ready for this? So one of my friends was a music video producer. Let me tell you what my friend looks like, Grace Kelly. She is tall, blonde, beautiful. She's like a beautiful Swedish noodle. And she, but she's like a very high level music producer. She produced videos for Beyonce. Like she's, does a lot. And she also works with a lot of high level other hip hop music producers. Well, she was producing a video for Nicki and Nikki said she wanted all the white people off the set. That included my friend, who's the producer. This is like telling the surgeon to get out of the operating room. It's like this, I'm, okay, I'm here to do this. All right. Then she told the other producer, who is black, to get his girlfriend off the set, who was also black, but she was beautiful. She was beautiful. So let's let's recap. Nikki hates all white people, just full stop, but also attractive black people. Got it. I find it so interesting that her whole thing is like she's Barbie, like Barb's. Barbie's white. Like when you think of Barbie, I'm sorry, you think of a white blonde. And I think it's very interesting that the people she seems to hate the most are white blondes. And yet that's the iconography she's attached herself to. I mean, the psychology there, I'm like, oh, can I conference my therapist in on this? This is wild. It's just, it's very interesting. It's very interesting. 
Also, you hate white people, but like you try to make your avatar like the symbol of like white beauty, Barbie. It's like if I said, I hate black people, call me Barack. It's like, what? <laughs> Can you like pick a lane? You're not making any fucking sense. I hate Asians. I'm Bruce Lee. Like what? What are you fucking talking about? Okay, Mulan. Weird. She, so I don't like Nikki from the jump. She's had some like good hits. Cool. Yeah, she's, I think she could be talented. What she's done to her body is bananas. Her choice of mate, her choice of mate equally unhinged. And now this thing with Megan, it does need to be said that throughout Nikki's unhinged delusional Twitter meltdown that truly felt like it was a psychotic break. It felt like a manic episode. Megan has said nothing, nothing, nothing. And she has just watched Nikki escalate and escalate and escalate and sink herself. And I think this is an excellent lesson when we deal with our enemies. When you deprive them of the one thing they need, which is your attention and engagement, their tactics will become so over the top that anyone who is on their side is gonna be like, ooh. So here's some of the lyrics from Bigfoot. Been trill, been doing it, been at it. People are still saying trill. Well, that's fine, I, I love to trill. It means true and real, in case you are also white. This little begging whore talking about Megan's law for a free beat, you could hit Megan raw. That was something else she tweeted and people were like, okay, we done heard it. Trying to steal the sauce, I said, get up out my cookbook, Burr. But really, I'm a sweetie pie, P-R-T-T-Y, but I'm P-E-T-T-Y, brr. Um, why did you lie about your lipo? Fucking your best friend's man is crazy. You the type, though. Just, I, this is just, I'm sorry, it's just a little soft and whack. She just mad that no Jigga ever loved her. No Jigga gonna stand 10 toes behind her. Is it my fault I got good vagina? Ugh. Would both of you stop talking about your vaginas? That's like the entirety of Megan's song. Hiss, it's vagina this, my pussy that. Like enough, enough. Jesus, I have good pussy. How do you even define that? Is it about tightness? Is it about uh, aesthetics? Is it about function? What does it mean to pop one's pussy? I don't want someone popping my pussy. I just find that, I think that there are other things you people could brag about besides you. Move on, okay, just move on. What's next, your period? The width of your cervix? Where does it end? Stop. So the real bad part of Nikki's song was talking about Megan's dead mother. And this is where she lost a lot of people. And this is why Charlemagne was like, this has gone too far. There's just some lines you don't cross and talking about someone's dead mom is it. And I think it's worth noting or worth pointing out that like to Nikki, Talking about your sex offender, murderer, child rapist husband, which by the way, all of those things he did on purpose is not the same as talking about someone's dead parent. Like, but to her it is. And that's so crazy is that Nikki went for the throat with Megan because that's how much Megan hurt her by one vague reference to what everyone already knows about this dude is he tries to rape children at knife point. And if you're so cool with this, Nikki, why are you going absolutely ballistic, ballistic? Because you, you're so not pressed about this? I don't know, you seem pretty fucking pressed to me. So let's hear what some of the comments, what some, some people are saying. Nikki for 72 hours. Y'all, I'm coming for Megan. Also Nikki, rhymes foot with foot three times. And apparently this is just part one. You're not ready for the next one. And people are like, no, we're not, because we don't need it. Nobody wants the second part of this, Nikki. And again, these are her fans. <laughs> uh, Cardi feels the safest right now. <laughs> I love Cardi. She's probably like, y'all bitch is crazy. Someone commented, a lot of people commented, the corn emoji with a trash can emoji. Got a lot of likes. Corn trash. Corn can? Corn. I don't know. I don't know what that means, but I'm going to start commenting that on the pages of my enemies, just corn and trash, because what does it mean? Corn is America's surplus. Okay. Here's what some former Cardi fans are, or Nikki fans are saying. I've been a barb for 15 years and it hurts me to say I'm disappointed. The song had no structure. It was all over the place and just felt like an audiobook of Twitter quotes. 
As a Nikki fan, I need people as delusional as the barbs in my life to hype me up like this. This is such an embarrassment. I regret all the shit talking I've been doing, thinking she was going to come hard. Nah, Nikki, keep the next installment. We good. Can't believe I waited all day for this. She literally put all the tweets she's made in the last 72 hours into a song. Okay. And these are compiled by my friend, Unpopular JP. Follow him. He is, he's like a snarky Australian gay version of me. He's the best. So then somebody else chimed in. Ken Barbie. This is apparently a gossip blogger. Oh. Buckle up. The fact that I be on this lady mind is funny. The grammar, you also need to buckle up for the grammar here. I'm sorry. But I love this. I get paid for this. Nikki, how are you going to buy anyone's catalog? That's something she said in the song. Megan, I'm going to fuck around and buy your catalog. How are you going to buy anyone's catalog when you got liens on your publishing and your last tour deal? You blew your advance from your last tour and now this tour is collateral. So you're literally about to tour for free because you owe Uncle Sam money. You want to holler that people judge your disgusting ass husband because they're not used to being loved? What? But you know who is used to being loved exactly like you? Wendy Williams. So Wendy like went hard on Nikki when she married Kenneth Petty. And Wendy was like, you are going to lose John Q. Public because no one likes a child molester and nobody likes a murderer. And this is such a bad look for you, Nikki. You're throwing away your career. <clears throat> Wendy's husband loved her pockets to the end, letting her do all types of drugs so he could keep digging in that purse while you sit up there looking like an ass. That man, Nikki, talking to Nikki, that man is keeping you all drugged up and mixing your coke with horse, horse tranquilizers and Ozempic, Ozempic so that he can make you more stupid while taking your money and letting you look crazy. You have to buy love. You have no room to judge anybody on anything. You have no friends. Hence why they get you out here looking like a complete maniac. Well, they yes, queen you to death just to keep their brownie points and your nasty ego under control. Your brothers are pedophiles. Your dad is a drug addict like you. Here lies the ghost of Nicki Minaj bodied into oblivion by a blogger I've never heard of. Wow. Wow. I also have heard that her new album, Pink Friday 2, Part 2, like, it's, we don't care anymore, is like being supported by bots. You know, that it's not selling, it's not doing well. Like, her wave is over, okay? And I think that this feud is a nail in the coffin because it indicates that she also believes her wave is over based on how pressed she is, you know? Think about all the people, all the celebrities who have tons of criticism against them and they don't say shit. There were so many people that, speaking of Barbies, trashed the Barbie movie. I don't know any of them personally because I don't want that kind of negativity in my life because I love the movie. Does Margot Robbie go off like this? Does Kim Kardashian go off like this? Does Mariah Carey, does Adele? Like think of the biggest names. Do they behave this way? No. When I think of people who do behave this way, they're on the bottom of the totem pole. Maybe at one time they were on the top, but it's like their place on the totem pole is ironically determined by how they act to hate. Even in the YouTuber space, Mona and Huda Katan, they're some of my friends. They are the classiest, most poised, they're like princesses. They're like princesses in their composure, Wait, considering they are in the same space as people like Jeffree Star and James Charles and all these other fucking nobodies who have come after them and tried to bait them into a fight. And they are like these beautiful sphinxes. They, they stay in their lane, they do what they do best, and they dominate because they don't take the bait. And I'm sorry, I'm gonna toot my own horn here. Toot toot, here comes the douche train. I don't take that fucking bait either. Every once in a while, I'll clap back at someone in the comment section. But... I can see on my YouTube dashboard how many videos I'm mentioned in a month or who, people who are sampling my videos and they're hate videos. A lot of them are hate videos. It's like, I'm not even paying you any mind. You're not worth my time. I'm an eagle, you're a pigeon. We're not the same. We're not the same. I'm not getting down in the gutter with you, okay? I'm just, I'm just not. And the fact that Megan is saying nothing to me solidifies her place at the top. It's not even about talent, it's about reaction. It's not about who's right and who's wrong. It is again about reaction. This is definitely a lesson we can take into life, okay? We can take this into life. Another lesson is that Nikki dropped this horribly half-baked diss track way too soon, way too soon. She should have done it the way Drake bodied Meek Mill in his song Back to Back, which again involved Nicki Minaj because Meek was dating Nicki at the time. Drake waited it out, he waited it out, 
Meek had just kept coming for him and coming for him. Drake waited out and he dropped what I believe was an amazing diss track. He said nothing and then he spoke on it once and he never brought it up again. And that's like part of the lyrics. He's like, I don't want to speak about this ever again. You know, say it once and move on. So again, the lessons here, either ignore it completely and just keep eagling out there or take your time, stretch, get your thesaurus out, come to me if you need some help. And you craft a response that is so devastating, they're afraid to attack you ever again. Should we read from the Bible real quick? Should we read from the Bible? AKA The Prince by Niccolo Machiavelli? I think that we should. Said our daddy. If an injury has to be done to a man, it should be so severe that his vengeance need not be feared. Basically, if you shoot, shoot to kill. I love this advice. I agree with it. And I remember reading The Prince when I was 15. That was probably the worst thing my teachers could give me. You might as well have given me like, you know, the anarchist cookbook and taught me how to make pipe bombs. It was just, it's equally devastating. I agree with this completely. If you're gonna come for someone, you have to come for them so hard and destroy them so completely, they're afraid to ever attack you again because they're gonna know what lies in store. What Nikki did, didn't do that. It actually told Megan that it's like, not really a lot to be afraid here. It told Megan, number one, first and foremost, Nicki Minaj has no self-control. She's incredibly emotional, she's incredibly reactive, and that is the enemy you want. Holy shit, what a gift. What a blessing if that's your enemy. Because a reactive and emotional person is actually very easy to control. And ironically, they go crazy, rah, lashing out, trying to make it seem like no one can control me. Actually, everyone can. Not via dominance, by via, by via, via baiting your emotions, by pressing buttons, and again, just watching you self-destruct. Very often, that's all you need to do. Don't believe me? Let's think of this. Let's think of this. You're already doing this, by the way. You are actually already adept at this. You break up with your ex. He was a fuck boy. He hurt you. Maybe he cheated. You have a new guy. Whether he's good to you or not, it doesn't even matter as long as he's hot. You make sure you are seen with this new piece of ass where your ex is going to find you, okay? You're going to make out. Your boyfriend's going to bring you flowers. Da, 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 and you're going to know that your ex self-destructs. He's going to be in your DMs. He's going to be talking shit about you. You got him. You already know how to do this. You already know how to get emotional reactions out of people. But if you don't, let me tell you, you have to find what someone is insecure about and you have to press. I'm a little bit of a sociopath, just a very little. I am very good at this because I don't have the stop gap of guilt slowing me down. Like when I see what someone is insecure about, I will go for the throat. I have called my enemies fat to their face. Why are you at this party? Oh, of course you're here, there's food. I said that to someone in the last week and a half. Because again, like there's no guilt stopping me. Shalom, that's so mean. She is so very fat. I know that, I know that. She started it with me, I will finish it. I am taking a page out of Machiavelli's page. <clears throat> I will take a page out of Machiavelli's The Prince. I will take a page out of whatever I need to. And this is important though. Notice I said, I didn't start it. She started it. I'll finish it. That's the way we also have to be. Okay, but hold on, I digress, I digress. How to find out what your enemy is insecure about. Very typically, it's what they brag the most about. What? Mm -hmm. Right now in society, we have the incredible benefit of archives. We can go through someone's social media, their tweets, their posts. We can see what are they trying to amplify? What are they trying to make you believe? That's what they don't believe themselves. And listen, we're all trying to make people believe something, okay? <clears throat> Sometimes it's because we genuinely like that part of ourselves. We're athletic and we're posting that we're showing, showing off our athleticism and playing sports and whatever. It doesn't always mean we don't believe we're athletic. It means we really want to be validated for that thing, right? So that can skew in two different directions. It's like, hey, I'm athletic. I want people to know this about me. I want to get a gold star for this. But it can also mean 
I need you to validate this. I, I need you to, I need you to believe me because I don't know that I believe me and I need you to believe me. It's the difference between being warm blooded and cold blooded, which we talk about a lot here. For a brief recap, <clears throat> cold blooded animals, what are they like? They have to get their warmth. They have to stay alive based on their environment. They got to get it from the outside. They cannot manufacture their own warmth. We see this in people. They cannot manufacture their own self-esteem. A warm-blooded animal comes from inside. A warm-blooded person, we know we're good. We do esteemable things that feed our self-confidence. Yeah, of course, we want validation. But at the end of the day, we know what we got going on. A cold-blooded person does not. And it takes a discerning ego like yourself to figure out which is which. And typically we can. If you go through someone's social media and you see them constantly trying to sell a certain narrative. My kids are my whole world. I love my hubby. We have the best marriage. God brought us together. Love you. I love you. Mm, girl. Constant pictures with the man. Constant posts about him. Gushy this. Gushy that. Sus. Conversely, you see the girl posting all these memes. I don't need men. I don't trust men. Fuck it. I love to be single. Girl, no, you don't. You want love more than anybody. Look behind the surface, okay? Take the appearances and flip it on its head and go after them in the reverse. Go after them in the reverse, okay? They post a lot of selfies. Guess what? They think they're ugly. If they're always posing in sexy outfits, they think they're fat and unfuckable. Press on that. Tell them they are fat and unfuckable. Tell them they are ugly. Tell them they will never find love. Tell them, I think your man's cheating on you. Tell them. Make it known that if they come for you, you are going to see right through them in a way that they cannot combat. If they could combat it, they wouldn't be so insecure. They would have done it already. It's honestly so fun. <sighs> I like having an enemy because it allows me to throw off the exhausting husk of empathy that I must wear at all times, that most of us have to wear. Well, maybe not most of us, maybe just people like me, but it lets me just be mean. And as women, it's not encouraged. We're supposed to keep sweet and live, laugh, love, aren't we? That's great, fine. But when we have the opportunity the righteous opportunity to go after someone who has wronged us and started shit with us. <sighs> Delicious. Thank you. Thank you. And that also makes me want to draw it out. <laughs> makes me want to draw it out. But I stick to my own advice. Speak on it once, body them into a million pieces, and then move on. Machiavelli says something else. Never do via force what you can do via deception. Don't be forceful. Don't be out there releasing your diss tracks and tweeting when you can accomplish the same thing with deception. Megan knows this. Her deception is that she doesn't care, is that she's not even paying attention. Of course she's paying attention, of course. But we are trained to believe what we see. That's one of the things we do as humans. We take things at face value. It helps our human being risk machine. You see a man in a police officer uniform, I assume it's a cop. I don't do a whole lot of analysis there. So again, we see someone who's not, not weighing in, not saying anything. We deduce based on books and covers, she's not bothered by this. Of course she's fucking bothered, but that's okay. That's okay. She's allowed to be bothered. It's about how she looks and the persona that she casts out into the world. That is her winning via deception and Nikki is trying to win via force. How is that working for her? Because in order for Nikki to win by force, it requires engagement. Megan's not engaging. She is depriving Nikki, her enemy, of the one thing she wants most, which is attention. What is cruelty if not deprivation? What is cruelty if not deprivation? So when it comes to war and fighting, the right answer, truly, and I'm not saying this from like, turn the other cheek point of view. Get the, get the fuck. No, okay, no. I'm saying deprive someone of attention from the, the standpoint of strategic cruelty because it will hurt them the most. It doesn't feel as satisfying to us in the moment because we just want to lash out to, we want to send that trillion word text, we want to toilet paper at their house, we want to do all of these things. That's trying to win a battle. 
We win wars, don't we? We win wars. It takes a lot more strategy. It takes patience. I read a lot of books on war because like, I love it. Sun Tzu, Napoleon, Machiavelli, and it all comes back to one thing, patience. I did my senior thesis on General MacArthur, and that was his thing, wait, wait, draw the enemy to you, patience, wait. And you're like, ah, it's so frustrating, but it, it's effective, it wins, it wins. So if people are telling you, just let it go, tell them to fuck off, okay? Play into that, be like, sure, yeah, I'm gonna let it go. And then you remember what I am saying. You fake, again, you win through deception, you win through deception. You tell those people, yeah, you're right, I don't even care, I'm just letting it go, I'm gonna turn the other cheek. I'm a godly woman, I have a Stanley Cup tumbler. You pretend that you don't care, and you lie in the tall grass, and you wait to strike until the time is right. Until the time is right, okay? Learn from Megan. Learn from Drake. Learn from Niccolo Machiavelli. Learn from me. But let us pivot for a moment, okay? Just in case you're Team Nikki, maybe you shouldn't be betting on sports because I don't think you can pick a winner. You might just, why don't you sit out the next election? That would be great for all of us. Just in case you're Team Nikki, let's learn from her mistakes, okay? If you believe Nikki is the greatest rapper alive, Oh, curious what the rest of your life is like. That's great. <clears throat> here's, here's what we could have learned here. It is difficult to pass the torch. It is difficult to pass the baton. Getting older is difficult. Feeling irrelevant is difficult. And again, you don't have to be a female rapper to understand this. Have you just graduated from something? Or you left your small town or you left your big town and you see people living this life that was once yours, it's difficult. It's mortality. It is. I'm I'm re-watching Gossip Girl, the whole series of Gossip Girl. And they used to write for Gossip Girl. And it's like, it is kind of bittersweet because I remember all the places that they reference. It was like the Oak Room and like G Spa and all these places that were like so amazing in like my heyday of New York when Gossip Girl was on the air. And it's like, fuck, I miss those days. You know, I miss those days. And I I go back to New York or like I read the gossip pages and I hear about the socialites and the royals and the it girls that are up and coming now. And it's like, damn, man, like that was me. You know, that was me. And I do, to my credit, I think I've done a good job of like closing that chapter in my life. I live in Montana right now and moving on. But here's, here's what I have done. And here's what I think Nikki could do. So Nikki, if you're watching, if you're not already foaming at the mouth and chewing on the furniture, just no, take that out of your mouth. Take take that out of your mouth right now. Put it down. You are, do you need a tetanus shot? Nikki. The way you can move on from your heyday and not even pass the baton, right? Because it's difficult to welcome our a replacement. Who can love their own coffin? You know, like who, who can love this? This is difficult. The way you do that is by having something else, is by having a second act. I was okay to leave New York City because I was ready to sort of like have a different vibe, a different persona, live in the countryside, like have a more international existence. You know, I was ready to move on from Gossip Girl and go into magazines and then onto YouTube and fashion and all this other stuff. It is actually, constant, not reinvention, but constant new chapters that you're writing, you know? When you can do that, you understand that an ending creates a beginning. And so, yeah, it's gonna be bittersweet to close out one chapter, to graduate, to move, to leave a job, to pivot your career, to end a relationship or a friendship, but you know that there's a new chapter that's starting. You also know that in between the end and the beginning, is gonna be a bit of a lull. We're actually talking about this right now in the Chalantourage. Um, if you haven't joined, join us. It's our like internet community. There's hundreds and hundreds of girls from around the world. We're on group chats all day long and I'm giving you basically everything I give you here minus celebrity stuff. It's more just like advice, deep dives. I talk a lot about my love life. I do a lot of crying, tell you about like Botox and all this shit, it's great. But we're talking this week for Serene Sunday, we talked about clearing the path 
when you're trying to manifest something or get these new blessings in your life or pivot or start a new chapter, you got to clear the old out first. And I use the example of like a Formula One race. They have them all over the world, Monaco, Vegas, Turin, whatever. They clear the street before the race starts. <laughs> Quite a bit before, quite quite a while before. They've got it all roped off, the detours are set up, the the space is clear, okay? And detours, detours are annoying. It's annoying to have to find a different route and to be inconvenienced for a little while. But you do it because you know, at that starting line, something big is coming and you're making room for it. And our lives have to function the same way. If we can trust that, a, that an ending creates a beginning, and yeah, there's gonna be maybe a few lonely weeks. There's gonna be some lean times where you get that business off the ground. There's gonna be that awkward growing out stage of your hair. If you can trust that like this is actually the growth, this is the awkward stage, but it is just a stage. And then the good things begin. Then the race starts. Then something really exciting comes down that road straight for you. Nikki can't seem to do this. She doesn't have a pivot. She doesn't have a backup plan. I don't know, if she does, she doesn't act like it. She acts like a woman who is clinging like a drowning person onto this persona, this, this career, the concept of feuds. It's like she's not aging out of that. And that to me tells me she's very frightened. And given what I know about her and how much she hates attractive people and white people and how much she hates her own body because look what the fuck she's done to it, that tracks. That's very on brand for her. She is scared. Her life seems to be ruled by fear. Look who she married. Because she didn't trust that she could find anyone who wasn't a child rapist. She didn't feel worthy of anything better than that. She didn't feel like she could be alone. Wow. But yeah, you really won over that feud with Megan. Because what, what did she do? Checks notes, she slept with her friend's man. I'm sorry, marrying a child rapist seems a little worse on the sliding scale of bullshit. So if you're afraid of moving on from a situation or getting older or becoming irrelevant, make yourself relevant. Make yourself continually relevant. Make yourself warm-blooded. So if you're sitting here worried about closing one chapter of your life and I'm going to be irrelevant, go out and make yourself relevant. Go out and make yourself relevant. Reinvent yourself. Yeah, it's energy. Grow the fuck up or don't. Consign yourself to the dust of irrelevant oblivion and just pack it in, okay? Go retire. Go work at a sandwich store. I don't care. But if you are worried about this to the point that you kind of get where Nicki Minaj is going and you like, this sort of keeps you up at night worrying that you're gonna one day just be invisible, make yourself visible. Take up space. And don't wait for someone to hand it to you. Take it. That's another thing you learn when you read a lot about war. No one gives you power, you take it. So in sum, what have we learned? Number one, when someone comes against you, either say nothing or body them so hard they wish they were never fucking born. How do you do that? You press on what they're insecure about. How do you know what that is? You look at their socials, you look at their life, you look what they brag about. Ask them what the best compliment they've ever received is. You'll get a lot from that. Ask them what the worst insult might be. You know, if you have this kind of access to them, what's the worst insult? You know, someone called me ordinary. Okay, thank you, oh my God, thank you. Gird yourself against these kind of attacks by doing a dive on your own socials and your own answers and ask yourself, am I giving away the keys to the kingdom? When someone looks in my profile, when they meet me, when they ask me, what are you afraid of? Am I making it a little too easy for them to figure it out and form weapons against me? Come up with decoy answers. If you're dealing with someone you don't really trust, come up with a decoy persona. <gasps> Hide who you really are. Because remember, the best fighters accomplish through deception and the losers always go for force.